Good afternoon, everyone. This is Katz from yokosonews.com. Hey, what's up? Uh, live from Yokai Mia, Japan, and Los Angeles, California, and Switzerland, Basel. Uh, you in Basel, right, Jakun, right? Yes. Okay. Basel. Okay. So, uh, um, Jeff is off the air again. What's going on? Jeff went off some internet problem right here but anyway so we'll we'll discuss the news to talk about uh first 10 minutes uh i had little problem with opening animation so i just gonna go ahead with that already without the opening sequence i apologize for the mistake but uh here we go <laughs> jacoon you are on the air what? okay so uh hey guys I'll try to find Jeff. <laughs> okay. Can you can you try to reconnect Jeff? Yeah, I'll, I'll find I'll find him. You do your show. Okay. All right. Cool. So uh, let me let me do the first first of all introduce uh, Yokoso News. Um, first, what's happened this week? So uh, first of all, um, Japan Film Festival Los Angeles coming up in April again. I just keep saying it to promote. Please, people, come in. April is coming up very soon, and please follow us on Twitter at Yokoso News. We have Twitter, and uh, we just renew the Facebook page to the new design. They just, you know, has a new page. Then uh, um, Yokoso News. If you if uh, you uh, like this show and Yokoso News, please like us on Facebook. And here we go. Let's go to the news of the week. I I, I found a really interesting story from Reuters that uh, in Manila, Philippines, they started a, a uh, maid cafe. So now you can enjoy the Japanese Akihabara otaku culture of the maid in uh, Philippines as well. So uh, that's kind of interesting. And then next, uh, Valentine's Day is coming up in it tomorrow. It's uh, yeah. It's uh, any any plan for Valentine's Day, Jakun? Um, Valentine's Day, yes, I, um, hold on one second, uh, I, I, um, uh, I have a, um, um, a date. Oh, okay. <laughs> online, but I'm also on a six hour time difference, so it's gonna be, uh, my first, uh, my first, uh, time in that, I guess, um, okay. so I'm thinking of, um, uh, some interesting things, okay. but yeah. So, so anyway, if uh, New York City. yeah, New York, okay. I hope New York City is watching. Okay. <laughs> um, if uh, audio chat doesn't really work well, maybe we just try the audio chat. All right, cool. <laughs> so uh, and next uh, next news, so it's related to Japanese anime and Valentine's Day. Um, one Reko Choku is the uh, music download site of Japan did the uh, ranking survey and K-On dominates the top three of the um, K-On character top uh, dominates the top three ranking of the anime section so uh, looks like uh, and K-On is going to come back this spring the comic version in Japan as well so it looks like um, it's uh, it's it's the trend of K-On. K-On is uh, kind of reviving. Sounds like. And next, One Piece. Uh, the uh, you know no, nowadays people all people knows about One Piece. But One Piece released the new comic book, 61st ed edition of the comic books, and it sold. 2 million copies in 3 days It's amazing I think uh, I think people uh, you know It's it's it just I could I can't you know I, I, I can't really believe that comic books are sold 
you know, super successful now these days, even after the uh, internet kind of everything. But um, the day of One Piece made a hit, uh, NHK News in, uh, broadcast a really interesting documentary about why One Piece became so successful. And they, it talks about how, you know, people these days are not really associate each other and feel some kind of uh, isolation from the society. On the, at the same time, uh, people are kind of keep this, this, uh, keep, uh, distra di keep, keep this, keep being discouraged by society, uh, especially Japanese people. For example, we're hearing lots of bad news that uh, we are losing, many people are losing jobs, uh, you know, many factories are going out away from the Japan and everything. So, uh, among such a, you know, um, hard time, uh, one story of One Piece uh, mainly talks about bonds and friendship. <coughs> so that kind of really, um, really attract the people all over Japan, I, I, I believe. And not only the uh, kids, but also uh, um, adults are really fascinated by Japan. So that's what the NHK, this uh, close-up Gendai talked about. It was a really interesting show. Uh, if you subscribe NHK World Premiere, some of you might be able to watch this episode throughout the world. And then uh, another anime news, Hatsune Miku train uh, launched in uh, Hokkaido. The, so uh, if you love Hatsune Miku and you might want to go to Sapporo to ride on the uh, Hatsune Miku train. And then this is business related and only related to the rich people. But uh, maybe maybe this is the news for you, Jaku and I. Uh, yes. Narita Airport is going to uh, 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 launch business jet only terminal finally. So to, finally to, I can fly in there. Yeah, yes. Yeah. To speed up the process, you know, previously even you pr you flew in in the private jet, you still had to come go through the uh, regular uh, custom and immigration. But now really you cool. have a, you have a designated designated terminal for private jet to speed up the that's entrance. Good. So Yeah, uh, that's what I needed. Yeah. When you when you came, right, last time. But <laughs> I came there, yeah, way, way back, back in the days. Yeah. Who is private are the jet? Japanese people, are the Japanese people watching? Uh, maybe. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll see. So maybe we can speak some Japanese later. <laughs> well, this is this is the show about Japan, so. And okay. Yoshi Yoshinoya, it's going to expand oh, in uh, Thailand. So uh, they're going to have the first store in Thailand. So uh, let's uh, let's see uh, how you know. Now you can enjoy Yoshino in Thailand as lo as well as other area, Singapore and stuff. So and then uh, what kind of music are you listening to, Cats? Oh, this is my friend's music. Mm. And then Stuck DJ from Florida. He's a quarter Japanese living in Florida right now, and he pro he, he's the regular of cafe. So, okay. Yeah, he was, and and then uh, I'll skip this. I'll skip that. All right, that has been the week of Japan. Uh, Jaku, uh, what's going on with Nihonjin? Jet? <laughs> Nihonjin. <laughs> What's going on with the uh, Jeff? Well, Jeff, Jeff's online. You just, you might have to um um okay. You have to add him to it. I can't okay. add him. Okay. Let's get it. Let's get Jeff into this because I really don't have anything to say. Like he knows everything. I I'm just a guy. Okay. I think uh, Marcus just joined from Sweden. Oh, okay. Hey, Mark. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? 
Nice jacket, Jeff. Huh? What? What's up, dude? Hey. Can you can you can you speak something, Jeff? Speak something? Okay, good. You can. I I can hear well. <laughs> I just wanted to test the mic. So uh, today, uh, the feature story of today, this week, is introducing Etienne, the movie about the hamster. So without further ado, uh, uh, you clear all the uh, trailer can be air, right? I... The trailer? Yeah. Want to see the trailer? Yeah, let's see the trailer. What, what do you think? Okay. Okie dokie. Let me... Oh, I haven't added the trailer yet. Do you have the trailer? I have the trailer. He, he understands the movie really well. Yeah, you should ask him about the editing process of the movie, Vittori. Yeah. Alright, let's hear the trailer of the ATN now. Here we go. Right now I suspect that a team has a Well, we won't have blood testing next week, but so it will only be Let's get it. Someone close to me is sick. Is it somebody I know? It's Etienne. You're a hamster? He looks fine. I think he'll be okay. Going out of town. Where are you going? I don't know. Just, you know. No place in particular? I sort of want to spend as much time with him as I can. When do you think you're coming back? Probably a week from now or so. Why? You gonna miss me? Okay, cause rent's due Friday. Hey Richard, is that a hamster? Uh, yeah, it's a hamster. What are you doing with a hamster? Um, he's my pet, and I just found out a week ago that he has cancer, so I decided to take him on a road trip, you know, to show him the world before he dies. You know what, when he dies, I'll buy you another one. It's a hamster. You just don't understand. Yeah, I just want to do for Etienne what I know he'd do for me, you know? Why'd you bring your hamster to the beach? Well, he's never really been to a beach before. Is it okay if I have a hamster? I like hamsters. We're gonna play a song for you guys, and it's dedicated to our new friend that we just met, and his name is Etienne. A, a teen? Uh, no, uh, Etienne. A, a teen? Uh, yeah. Well, that's a very interesting name. Well, right now it's. Just... All right. Um, that has been the trailer of Etienne. So, it's such a cute story. I like it. I watched it. Yeah, so, how do I know this movie? Jack, Jack, how do you uh, know this movie? Yeah, Jack, hey, how do that? I know this movie? I think we had a uh, one month uh, theatrical. Japan. Um, it played about uh, 1,000 cinemas and it was really successful so I'm pretty sure you heard it at the time and um, now we're, you know, come out of the in Japan too, so. Okay. Was it that or, I don't know, Jeff? <laughs> I believe it was in Cine Vegas, uh, 2009, uh, in June, <laughs> and we had cats come along to do press for the film uh, when when we play, premiered, premiered there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of 10 films, we were one of 10. 
Yep. Mm, yeah, that's true. You know what, um, guys? I think, <laughs> <laughs> guys. Uh, you know what? I think uh, I just have to switch to the uh, audio chat. I think I, I've seen hey. your I've seen your face and stuff, but uh, I think we have to save the internet bandwidth, unfortunately. So let's okay. let's let's switch back to audio chat now. So. Uh, but I brought all these flyers to show. Okay. You know? What are we What are we gonna do about that? Like, <laughs> we already we already. I was gonna promote the DVD. How can people see the DVD? When okay, show show the DVD they, they, now. They need to all right. Talk about the release. No, I, I know, but I'm I'm gonna just switch to the audio only. Hey, but oh. but Jeff, you sh you should um you should actually you know it, it's not really true that um, we met cats actually at the um um at the Cine Vegas. He, we met him there too. He was uh we met him at a at a club. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, he was actually the guy who uh, sound mixed the movie. Yeah. So. Well, no, no, I, I'm, I'm, ha that's, I'm that's, having that's the, I'm having the, I'm having, I'm having the audio problem. Let me, let me connect you via the audio. audio I have, chat. A, I have great audio. Okay. <laughs> oh no, no, I think we're getting news from Sweden to turn off the video, but um, so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Can I, you turn I, off the video? <laughs> <laughs> it's. I think it's better to turn it off. Okay. Um, so, uh, how do I do, do that? Okay, no, I, I think I have to connect, uh, disconnect to once. You gotta, you gotta do it, yeah. Okay, alright, I'll, I'll connect you one more time. Uh, don't send. Audio chat. Jeff. Yes. Yes. Jacqueline. All right. All right. Now I'm I, here. It's, it sounds much better. All right. All right, Jeff. Here we go. Jeff, what's up? Hey. All right, cool. Now, now it sounds much better now. All right, cool. So, uh, Going back to the question, if you have, if you guys have any question about film, please log on to uh, Social Timeline on Twitter or Facebook at uh, yokosunews.com slash live. You see the right side window, you see the uh, chat window, you can leave the comment there and ask us a question. Uh, but, so uh, Jeff and Jack... Jeff and Jacqueline. First of all, Jeff, would you introduce yourself? Yes, this is Jeff Mizushima. Uh, I am calling from California, LA, Los Angeles, California. And uh, I am a filmmaker here. Um, and I made a feature film in 2009 called Etienne, uh, the trailer that you just saw. And um, it's been all downhill from here. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and Jacun. Yes, I am uh, Jacun Kadouf. I am uh, currently calling from Basel, Switzerland, and I have um, had the pleasure of producing Etienne with Jeff, who's uh, one of the most hilarious guys I've ever met. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. So, uh, what is uh, your movie about, Jeff? Etienne is about um, a, kind of like a college dropout named Richard, and he he has a only one friend, and it's a hamster. And he finds out one day that his hamster, dwarf hamster, has terminal cancer. So he decides to take it on a road trip up the California coast to show the hamster the world before he has to put it to sleep. And along the way, the two of them meet a bunch of colorful characters that teach them about life, love, and happiness. Cool. Um, I've seen the movie, and but uh, let me let me let me go back to the question: How do I how do I know this movie? How do you how do you know this movie? Yeah. But besides the fact that you worked on it, or oh, really? Did I work on it? <laughs> Yeah, uh, you were our sound designer. Oh, really? Okay. 
Um, that's okay. Well, I guess. Uh, hey, I, cats. Yeah. Uh, cats. Yeah. Yeah. Are you not gonna look in the camera? We're gonna. We're seeing your side. Side view <laughs> online. I know. I know. But it's it's cool. Uh, I, I need to. I need to. I need to uh, look at this co what monitor. What kind of sometimes. dress are you wearing? Uh, I'm wearing Jinbei. Dude, that's racist. Nice. <laughs> Not a dress, oh. man. What? <laughs> oh, sorry. Clothes. <laughs> I remember I'm a foreigner. Yeah, I'm yeah. Foreigners. It's okay. It's okay. Um, so, so, uh, uh, Jeff, uh, how do we know it? Well, so we actually, uh, this is the disclaimer, folks. Uh, I did work on this film as a sound designer. Jakun, Jeff, and I all went to same school, film school, Cal State Long Beach. That's how we know each other, right? Can I say that? Yeah, it's a, I, I, it's a good what, school. Was it was it was it secret that we went to school together? Uh, no, the f and and it's fine except some things are secret. Oh, okay, I I can't. So I can't. I'm not supposed to tell you about that, right? And that uh, yes. okay. yeah. no no yeah we were all we were all uh, Cal State Long Beach alum and uh, I I uh, wrote the script while I was still in film school I, I wrote and directed and edited the film and uh, I wrote it while I was still in film school and I think Jakun had just graduated and he was going to UCLA and um, after after I, I graduated uh, I um, robbed a bank and I took the money from the bank robbery, <laughs> and uh, we we made the film right right after literally literally uh, weeks after I graduated, I, we started without even knowing what what we were doing. We just up there and made it. Okay. okay. Actually, robbing the bank was probably the best production I've ever produced. The movie's good too, but Jeff is really good at robbing that bank. Uh, okay. Well, what was that robbing the bank? Is that short film? No, that uh, actually, no. Yeah, we didn't really rob the bank. We, oh. we made a deposit. Oh, so okay. We had to start a bank account when oh. we were uh, opening, uh, oh. starting production on the film. Okay, okay. Sorry. Um, and and we were we we um, we were running so late with this whole thing that um, we actually had to um, put so much pressure on the banker that she said she's only gonna help us out if she can be in the movie. And so now she's in the movie. Oh yeah 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 I remember the Wells, Wells Fargo lady. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Your story. She's now she's now majorly credited on Amazon. <laughs> cool. So uh I mean this this the entire story of the film journey itself is um interesting to me as well but uh yokoso news is the online website to talk about japan so i kind of have to talk about japan because our our main theme is about japan in a way so uh what's what's the relationship to japan jeff this is, do, do you have any any do you have any uh uh stuff about japan relationship to japan yeah Let's see here um, I'm, I'm Japanese American. Does that count? Oh, yeah, sure. So, uh, I, <laughs> I've never been, I've, I've been to Japan once, uh, for, for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, uh, kind of like on a, on a job, but, um, I, I am Japanese, uh, and I think I brought a Japanese, um, perspective to the, uh, film. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, 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 well, anyway. Well, uh, well, we need to mention we need to mention our Japanese core. We had like two major Japanese um, connections besides cats, obviously. Oh, um, yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, we had uh, 
I hope I hope he's watching because I have not heard from him in a long time, probably for a reason. But uh, Taka, where are you, Taka? He was too cool. I wish I could show pictures here because I have some really good pictures. Um, and uh, I, I, I have our... I have the picture production picture actually. I, by the way, you have production picture of Taka next to the van. You better show it now. Um, and um, we also had Junia. Um, who was um, our production manager. I mean, he really was like great. He helped out wherever we needed help, and we did need help. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, when we were all coming, when I was, we were coming from film school uh, into this movie, we brought along a lot of our film school alum with us to make the movie, who just happened to be a very internet uh, um, yeah. group of people, and uh, a big chunk of which were Japanese. Including yourself, cats. <laughs> so uh, n not Japanese American, j true Japanese. Yeah, I, was yeah. the only I think I think we had a Japanese quota um, to work on the yeah. film. We needed yeah. we yeah. needed we needed five, and we we hit we hit it. So we won. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, but anyway, uh, okay. Um, so uh, what? First of all, well. Uh, let me let me hear how did you come up with this uh, story about the hamster, Jeff? Um, the story about the hamster that was with uh, at the time that I was writing. In addition to being uh, uh, in film school, I was also working at an after-school program for kids, ages six through twelve, and uh, at, at the it was kind of like a camp, like a summer camp, and I had a dwarf hamster as a pet, my own pet. I just thought that the hamsters were pretty cute, and I brought it into um, my after-school program to, to be a, kind of like a mascot for the kids, and uh, I, I didn't know that, the, I didn't realize that they, they'd be so enamored by this, uh, this one dwarf hamster, and even though the hamster would just stay in its cage and not do anything, the kids would just stare at it for hours, literally hours. Like they wouldn't play outside; they would just stare at the hamster, and they wouldn't even want to touch it. They just stared at it. So I thought that, uh, wow, man, uh, kids would just stare at the hamster doing nothing in its cage for hours. If I made a movie about a hamster, I'm sure that kids would just watch it. Just if I, if all the movie was, is a hamster on a in a bicycle for 90 minutes, and kids would just watch it, I thought that that would be something very compelling <laughs> for kids. So um, that's how it started. And then uh, in the script writing stage, uh, I think the first draft was about 50 pages. And uh, I was going to shoot that 50 pages. That was my, uh, that was going to be the shooting script early on before the board. And uh, I was going to shoot it on Super 8 uh, and strictly about the hamster on, on a bicycle with Richard. And then when Jakun came on board, uh, he he added he wanted to add more, uh, I guess more weight to the film, more dramatic weight and more, uh, just to make it bigger, bigger than it was about just to being about a hamster. He wanted to bring more to it, so uh, that's why uh, it, when it, when people eventually watch the film, the the uh, nine viewers right now who eventually will watch the film, they'll see that uh, it's not really just about the hamster. It, it, it has a lot to do with uh, just, it's a coming of age story and um, it's kind of like a romantic comedy in a way. Um, not between Richard and the hamster, uh, but uh, there's another film. <laughs> <thing. laughs> and, and, and just, uh, it's about life. It's, it's about, uh, what does the poster say? It's a film about the little things in life. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna open here. What? 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 <laughs> what? I didn't say anything. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Jakun, so uh, do you want to add something to it? Um, I mean, to the same question, um, I mean, I just, um, I got the script and, um, and I read it. For me, it was, um, it, I loved it. I uh, haven't read, I hadn't read a, a funny script like this in in years, and um, I was looking for a project to produce for my thesis at UCLA, and this was perfect. So I I asked Jeff if he would be down, and we uh, 
we, it was really quick from there. Like we did a little bit development, um, but um, mostly, I mean, the, he had so much stuff in place already that um, you know we basically just uh, we were able to hit it, hit it, hit the road and go shoot it. So it was good. It's great, great experience. Okay. Very cool. good time. Yeah. So, uh, well, you kind of mentioned a little bit, Jeff, but how did you, as a newly grad, grad, graduate of the uh, film school, how did you uh, um, prepare for filming? How, you know, until the beginning of, you know, from you, you already talked about the story, but in between the script and the uh, first day of the production, what what made you like really kickstart to, to to start filming this film? The the kickstart. Well, well, I, I was dead set on on shooting the film. Regard, I like if I had to shoot it on a cell phone camera, uh, we I would have shot the film. So it it was uh, <laughs> dire need to to make um, this movie uh, after I graduated in, in whatever form it would have been in. I, I was gonna make something. So uh, I was just so fortunate to get Jacqueline on board, uh, and especially since he was looking for a project, since he was still he was a graduate film student at UCLA, he was looking for a project for his, his school. So it, everything just coincidentally happened to match at, at that time, right when I graduated and right when Jacqueline. It was towards the end of the year, a school year, so he needed something for his his uh, school. And uh, pretty much all my friends had just graduated. I, either they just graduated film school, or uh, they've been out of film school for a year and they were just wanting wanted to make something. And um, I, I we we had a little bit of financing, not not enough to to finish to completely finish the entire film, but we had enough to get started. So we, we took that. Funny, and uh, we, we just rounded up all our friends who were willing to help us out. And uh, I think one thing that sped thing up was the fact that I, I already had the cast before. Uh, I, I, I had the cast locked pretty much when I wrote the script because I wrote the script specifically for the actors who were in the movie, for, for a lot of them. Okay. Of them. Well, some that was the, yeah. Some of the supporting characters we we cast it, but most of them. I wrote for them, so it was really easy to to get everything going really fast. Yeah, that was that was actually my uh, next question. Um, so, how did you find your cast? Uh, for for anyone who had seen the movie already, uh, a lot there are not there are a lot of non actors who are my friends, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there, there are some real actors there. But uh, there, there are a lot of them. Half of them, I would say, are, are just were just my friends um, from college and or from way back. And um, I thought they were interesting enough to put in a movie, and they were willing. They were willing to let me abuse them, and uh, <laughs> just strangers into their house and, and shoot a movie. And um, we're all fairly young at the time. Uh, this was. When we shot it was in 2007, so it's been a while. Uh, was that four years since since yeah. we actually shot it? It's hard, yeah. hard to remember. Hard yeah, to remember. I think. Um, we're I, I remember we were we were actually doing an audition too, but that was pointless because um, I, I came in and I was like Jeff. I thought we have to do this all like a student film and you know start out doing like auditions and doing all these things to make it all right. And we did it, and then realized that Jeff already had cast the best people before, so um, we um, wasted a little bit of time there. But um, it was still it was still fun. We have some good audition footage, which is always fun to watch. Um, <laughs> People you don't so cast. It's, it's really like when when you have your cast ready, uh, th there's no reason why you can't just start shooting. There there really isn't. When when you have all the cast, all the actors ready and willing and available to do it, to do the movie, it, I, there was nothing stopping us. Hmm. Like, uh, I mean, uh, I would say. Stupidity was working for us because <laughs> we, we had a lot of things that we didn't prepare, but we just did it anyways. Because uh, that's stupidity. That, that, that. Well, that's the beauty about making your first bigger film. It's kind of like you don't know what you're getting yourself into, 
Really? Because you think you got it all figured out or it's gonna happen somehow, you don't know all the, the things that can go wrong. You know that things will go wrong, but you, you pro like we thought that, you know, if something goes wrong, that could be fun too. So, um, so it, it, it's cool. Like looking back, I guess, um, I don't know if we would, I, I think we probably wouldn't do it again, but we would not, not want to have done it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, uh, let me let me go to the questions of of the social timeline. Broken cord. When will ATM screen in Japan? I would love to see it here. Well, broken cord. Uh, I have. I will have some announcement down the line, right, Jacon? Not not yet though. Well, I mean, we're working on a Japanese release. That's no. Uh, that's no uh, secret. Um, because uh. I think that um. Uh, Japanese people who have seen the film have responded really well to it and um, so um, there's a few people helping us out with that um, uh, it's good to have been in uh, in LA and around a lot of like you know international students because that's how you meet people that will eventually go back to Japan and uh, so one friend of mine um, is gonna try and lobby it to a theater and then we have a sales agent um, in Japan also that is taking a look now at the DVD and trying to set it up and if we uh, end up doing self-distribution um, then maybe uh, Kat is gonna jump on board as well and help out with that so yeah um, DVD already has the Japanese subtitle right yeah exactly like the DVD that we uh, um, because we had to like because right now the idea is to um, um, to see if we can do a Japanese release, um, I guess Germany and maybe Turkey would be also an interesting uh, 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 con countries to, to get the movie out. So um, the that's why, yeah, it's funny. Um, I know I haven't told you that, but like the minute we uh, went to, we went to Germany to a film festival and um, as the film started to get a lot of buzz in Germany, we, we got on certain blogs and stuff. It was a one-to-one -one overspilled the turkey like Germany we got huge hits on our website and at the same time Turkey we had a lot of hits so I think there's some sort of a connection between uh -huh. Germany and Turkey and I'm not surprised I, I like to I like to here. yeah I like to ask the question uh, later on what well, well the uh, I have during the film festival question how did you promote in Europe Jackson but um, um, salad Salad Day's film, what advice would you give to an aspiring filmmaker? Well, uh, Jeff? <laughs> what advice would I give to an <laughs> aspiring filmmaker? I I'm still an aspiring filmmaker, so I don't know how I could give advice when I I'm... I'm can somebody give me advice? I would like to take some advice. <laughs> I would like some advice well, on a distribution uh, contract. <laughs> That's no, what I'm dealing it, with right now. One, one of my favorite making of footage is um, we have a, had a great story because we had a... Uh, a DP um, in the movie who broke his ankle like how many days before the shoot like a week before the shoot and um, so we were like you know Murphy's Law right there hitting like whatever can go wrong will go wrong so we're like sitting in my apartment and like so what we're we gonna do we can't have our DP come up there with a broken ankle and so Jeff informed me that that the guy was actually on his way driving to my place with a stick shift I was like what is going going on so he he was driving there and then I, Jeff gave this interview and he talked about like how all these things are going wrong in the movie and um, uh, and he ended the interview saying um, the only good thing uh, he's saying the only good thing to come out of this is that he bought a, a book on directing that he's reading up on so uh, that could be advice for filmmakers buy a directing book <laughs> Yeah, it's tough. You you, you feel. I, I was asked this a lot uh, when I was uh, when we do, were doing our film festival tour with the Etienne, and I would do Q and A's after the uh, screenings, and a lot of questions about yeah, what, what uh, I'm an aspiring filmmaker or, or, or I'm in, still in film school. What advice would you give? And then you know I'm I'm like I made one movie, and so what <laughs> what the hell do I know? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> well, you still said some good things. You, yeah. get, you, you, get, you said some good things, like, um, you know, Vegas was the best, probably. <laughs> I don't remember Las Vegas. Uh, maybe Kat remembers Las Vegas. <laughs> Cats recorded everything in Las Vegas. Yeah, I think um, so I, I can't. I can't. I, I, I. Well, internet does not have any censorship, but uh, I, I can't really say. I don't want to say to the uh, right now, but. Um, <laughs> you want repeat viewers? I get it. Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think uh, advice to uh, aspiring filmmaker is just is that just do it. I think. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah, agree with that. Right there. Yeah, just that's it. that's perfect. Yeah. It's like, you know, I mean, and don't think about the five years that you'll be spending, you know, finishing your film, <laughs> trying to get distribution, and all these things. I mean, it, it's really not like. Uh, I would actually give another piece of advice. I think that um, make sure that um, whoever you work with, on the creative end, uh, make sure you 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 know kind of would be wanting to go through the desert with that person or at least have like a, a good beer and I like not just you know oh we want to make a movie together like you want to be able to go out with that person and, and be like hey let's let's have a good night you know because there's going to be a lot of a lot of that too where you you're going to be in situations where you might not have the greatest fun but at least you can laugh about it and you can you can have a good time while doing something that you don't want to do um so that's uh yeah, there's Taka. Yeah, there's Taka. Ah, see, uh, do you, you you have that picture? How come you have that picture? I Taka, backed up your hard drive when oh, we you... were, when we were working oh. on the sound, and I asked you, you, I asked you to give me the promotional material. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, you know, I love for cats to have these pictures, but let's say somebody steals those pictures off my hard drive that I don't like, then I would be pretty pissed, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I asked you a permission two years ago, you, which you, well, you obviously you forgot. I know, I know, yeah. I'm just kidding. But no, that's my advice to filmmakers. Make movies with people you have fun with, and, um, you know, like, uh, don't think uh, too much about, like, uh, making a million dollars with it you know if it happens great if not then you know you made a movie i mean that's 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 a great thing to do and okay. uh, there's people out there that that will see it and will like it there's so many channels these days to get movies out there so um you know at least that problem like as far as distribution goes you know it's frustrating not to sell your movie for a million dollars at sundance but on the other hand there's a thousand channels to get your movie out there and millions of people who can see it it's just maybe you're not gonna be rich doing it so if you keep that in mind and you have fun making your movie i i think nothing can go wrong cool cool sounds good so uh let's go to the next question in the questionnaire so jeff yes so this movie is about hamster right yes. so uh how did you uh train your hamster we, we uh, why had what? <laughs> how how huh? so you 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 put the hamster in the story so what what is your relationship to the ha ship to the hamster and the, how did you train hamster or who, who who's the hamster in the movie like an emotional relationship <laughs> <laughs> or what do you well uh, just just my bit, why I did you choose the hamster why did I choose the ham? Well, I chose the hamster for the dwarf hamster for the because I worked at that um, after-school program, so that was that that what's that's what started it. And uh, I I just uh, hamsters are probably aside from goldfish, they're the they're the kind of pet that you would uh, as a child would have because they're the easiest to maintain and they're not they're not very needy. You just feed them. And then they don't last very long. Unfortunately, they don't. They don't have a long life lifespan. They think it's about like two, two to three years for for a dwarf hamster. So they're good. Uh, I think they're really good animals for children to have. Just they learn about life with, with uh, by having a hamster. Mm. And uh, <laughs> what was that, Jacob? Yeah, they learn how to take care of a, of somebody with a hamster because the hamster yeah, is really yeah, easy yeah, to yeah. maintain, they develop, really. They develop, they develop a bond with it, and the hamsters are just so cute that it's very hard not to want to be with it all the time. So uh, I, I had two hamsters, 
Um, one that I got uh, for that uh, after school program, and then another one a little girl uh, at my uh, camp just gave, gave to me because she, uh, my hamster was so popular at, at my after school program that all the kids made their parents buy them dwarf hamsters. And when I say all the kids, I mean three. So one of the three gave me, <laughs> me their, had, had a, uh, one of their, th- uh, the, the kids had a hamster that had babies, and then they gave me uh, uh, one of their ba- the baby hamsters. And that ended up being the main hamster in the film. So we had uh, about a dozen hamsters, 12, uh, in the movie. And um, they all had their own personalities. So we would use, uh, we would be with the hamsters. And when I say we, me and Jacoon and some, like two other people, would uh, understand like, oh, well, this hamster right here uh, is very lazy. So if we need a scene where the hamster's kind of sick, we'll, we'll use this hamster. And then this other hamster is really active. So if we need the hamster to run around, we'll, we'll take that hamster. So uh, each hamster uh, served a specific purpose for, uh, for the, uh, whenever we needed it in the film. And uh, we ended up with 12 because, so I started with two. And then uh, we realized that we probably needed more hamsters uh, for for different, like I was describing, like different hamsters uh, now. So we got two more. And then those two that we got had babies. And uh, there was it ended up being 12. And we were shooting the movie for about a, what, a year? Six months? In that span, the babies grew up. So we were able to use the babies in, in other shots. And we also teamed up with the American Association, which is an organization in the States. I don't know if there's one in Japan, but uh, it's it's an animal... Uh, how would you describe it, Jakun? The American Humane Association? American Humane is um, animal rescue. No. Um, they're, uh, they come out to the set and, and supervise kind of the action that um, that uh, you know of the animals and making sure everything is done right so animals don't get abused or um, you know they're just kind of uh, have a protocol and they take notes and if you uh, do everything according to the um, um, yeah like kind of the animal rights um, they're 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 making sure those are in in sync. So yeah, if you do everything right and you're um, you're actually entitled to get like a certification called uh, um, uh, no animals were harmed in the making of this picture, and that's that's what we uh, were hoping to get. Um, we were a little scared at the beginning to call these guys up because we didn't know like you know that's one of the things uh, again of just uh, going to make a movie. Um, we didn't know like what the deal was if we were to uh, get those guys on board. If it cost us a lot of money, you know we had to pay them to come come out to the set because we're shooting all over the place. I mean, the first day they came out, we were shooting up in. Uh, uh, Loch Lomond, which is two hours into the woods from Santa Cruz, and um, you know it was already a hard shoot for us. And n- not even mentioning what we shot, we shot the hamster um, rolling down a hill uh, in his ball, falling into the uh, uh, into a lake. Um, obviously, we didn't use a real hamster, but um, uh, like the uh, uh, that's the day they came out the first day, and we were just like so scared. But it turns out that these guys, um, when you're SAG, um, when you're signatory with SAG, the Screen Actors Guild, um, you actually don't um, you don't have to pay them. They they fly out for free, and uh, they also uh, they will uh, pay for all their expenses and just be there. And uh, and if you're if if you're lucky, you get the certification, which uh, we did. So it was a it was a very good experience. Um, uh, working with the American Humane. Now, for them to come out to Japan, um, I don't think it's enough for you to sign with the uh, with the uh, with SAG. Um, any international production, you'll have to pay them to come out. And uh, I don't know, like um, if do it's, they, do uh, they have uh, cats? Do they have a American Humane? Uh, not American. Do they have a Japanese Humane Association? Well, they they do have some organization, uh, non-profit, try to protect the animal. But just a num- uh, I don't think they have the specific. Uh, Is it for film or just in general? 
uh, in, in general. I, I'm sure they have in gen, general, I think. Yeah, so see, like if I was a Japanese filmmaker, I would go to these guys and I would um, I would ask the, the, uh, the, the animal rights group to um, become a partner on my movie and pay for the American Humane Association to come to Japan. Because that's... that's uh, it's so good to have them on set. Seriously, I mean, it, it's like it, it helps. It helped us to be more professional in the end too, because we knew there was somebody there um, who would actually, you know, make sure everything's done right. Plus, um, uh, the the other thing was that uh, you know, like uh, when we had those babies, when that happened, it was. Uh, I mean, Jacob, the first not, thing not we, we did. The hamsters had the babies. Now we didn't have the babies. The hamsters. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I shouldn't mention the other thing. Okay, um, anyways, uh, yeah, when the hamsters had the babies, the first call we did, obviously, was to the American Humane Association and be like, hey, uh, what should we do now? <laughs> so, anyways. I, um, I think, uh, man, because, uh, cats, uh, I, I just saw um, this documentary, uh, The Cove. I, oh, yeah. Have you heard of that? Uh, I don't want to. I don't. Japan, I, don't I don't want to go into. I. I don't. I don't. Ha, I. I can't go into that I area yet. I think Japan yet. needs a humane association. I. I can't. I can't. I. I he, there's a couple reasons that I cannot talk about it. Well, which. Uh, which one of it? Oh, is. so so you can swear on the internet, but you can't talk about that. Cats, uh, it's come about. On. It's about is your family the, uh, with the fishing industry. Nope. No, 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 no. But anyway, uh... <laughs> we should we should call we should get Junior to join this call because I think that it was a heated discussion about this with Junior. <laughs> no, well, the pro no, yeah. no, no, no. The problem is that um, the problem is that Japanese people themselves are now like uh, they just don't accept to talk about the cove at all because of the Japanese media control the uh, information. So uh, they they don't really oh talk. God. So so that's the problem of the so uh, the pro so the problem is, Yokoso News has to be famous enough to be able to spread the word. So until you, then, you, until then, I don't want to increase any hostility towards Japanese. Otherwise, Japanese media going to. You, you're uh, too you're too diplomatic, cats. You have an opportunity <laughs> here to that start. That. You you. you you have to start a uh, a people revolution like in Egypt. <laughs> well, it doesn't work like that in Japan, unfortunately. Anyway, so um, um, <laughs> love love the interview. Can director producer talk about independent film culture in the USA today? Um, we can talk about when. Um, so yeah, we can kind of start talking about that. So, uh, tell me about, you know, um, during the film, uh, shooting of the film, you had a great kind of road trip kind of a journey to when, when filming the trip. So, uh, how, how was the journey of filming, filming the movie, Jeff? The journey, uh, it was long <laughs> and uh, let's see. Uh, it was exciting, you know. It's my it was my first movie. It was, it was Jacoon's first feature, and a lot of a lot of uh, the crew members, um, my friends, first feature, and uh, just just doing something uh, on on that scale, which at the time was was the biggest thing that we've all worked on. Um, it was fun. It was really fun and exciting, and I hated every second of it because it was very painful. Um, like uh, physically painful and psychologically taxing and um, I probably screamed and lost my temper a million times and I was you know frustrated a lot because um, because it was such a small production and Jacoon too I was surprised that he didn't like uh, kill somebody on set because he was <laughs> a lot of um, usually on on even an independent a normal independent film uh, you you would have what like five producers right and then each producer would have their own pa or assistant. we we have we have five producers <laughs> well now we do but you know during shooting you, you would have oh, a yeah, line, that's right care of all the logistical things during any production any given day and then you'd have another producer take care of 
one thing, we had a, and we, then you'd have an assistant director and a second assistant director, and you'd have this production team. That, you'd have a caterer. Yeah, you'd have a caterer who wouldn't <laughs> just make a sandwich with a cucumber in the middle of two pieces of bread. You'd have, uh, although I that was, that was we had that. I I don't. I'm not complaining. But you the would barbecue have, was good. Good. You would have a production team, and we didn't have that, so it was very stressful with Jakun really doing everything um, aside from the actual shooting of the film. He, he was doing everything in the background, and I was trying to do as much as I could um, just up front, and uh, I was an ego thing. Um, I, I wanted to operate the camera myself. And, and that kind of took me away from since since you know when, once you operate the camera or, or you're, you're or you're your own DP a director of photography you, you kind of lose track of the acting and, and what a director is really supposed to be responsible for is, is performance so when you're multitasking um, you, you not only get frustrated with everything you, you kind of limit yourself you, you make your um, you make yourself mediocre at everything and instead of just making yourself great at one thing. So yeah, it was, it was really tough. Um, it was a tough journey and I wouldn't have done it again. I won't do it again like that. Uh, <laughs> something else that's um, equally stupid, but it won't be the same thing. But now you, un <laughs> now you understand the, uh, the reason why there are three, four producers on set. The, oh, yeah. the reason why there's a you can operate the camera and direct at the same time, but sometimes yeah. you have to Well, do. I mean, you know, it was, um, as much as it was a decision, it was also the circumstances of a low-budget movie. You couldn't really, we, we couldn't afford anybody. And, you know, the whole deal that Jeff was actually operating the camera, that was not only his own choice. Um, it was after we saw the first dailies that it, we thought it was better for him to actually frame things. Um, but, yeah, there's some, there's some <laughs> oh, good <wait>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say the biggest mistake we made on, on, on the uh, the set on shooting the for the first half of the movie uh, was we shot we shot 16 super 16 so film it wasn't digital it wasn't uh, a DVX 100 it wasn't a red camera it wasn't any of that kind of thing it was film and one camera we only had one camera and we didn't have a monitor. So normally on a film shoot, you, you'd have something called a video village. So uh, there's the camera guys, they would have the camera, and they would shoot the actors, and then the director and all the producers and, and uh, whoever else will, will be like under this little tent with these couple monitors to, to see the shot, right? And um, they'd be, maybe they'd be the production designer there, and they'd, they'd say, "Oh man, that uh, there's a there's a Coke can in, in, in the shot. I'm gonna take that out." So they see the sh they see the frame. Everybody sees the frame. So in our on our shoot, we were like, "Yeah, we don't need we don't need a monitor. What, what, what do we need a video monitor for? You know, Wh whoever's operating the camera is good enough, and, and plus it'll save us a hundred dollars." So I think I think our main problem was it was the, that uh, we could afford the monitor, we could afford all these things, but we couldn't afford the tent. So that's why but, we couldn't do it. Yeah. So my my point is, we had one person uh, at the frame at any given time. Whoever was operating the camera had only one eyeball inside <laughs> the lens, uh, inside the viewfinder. And that person was responsible of how a shot was framed, if it was in focus, if, you know, all the other, if there was a production, if there was like a Coke can in the way that we didn't want in there, we would, we would know, except for the person who's operating the camera. And the mistake I made was trusting another person who was nearsighted um, to... Uh, <laughs> And then while I was focusing on performances and the acting, but really uh, the biggest mistake I made was not having a, a video monitor, a video monitor on set so that me, a producer, a Jacoon, and uh, whoever else was there can just see the shot and say, wait a minute, um, the, script supervisor. That should be on a tripod. It shouldn't be handheld. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or we'll say, well, you know what? That's that's not really in focus. Uh, we should just do it again. Shot with focus. 
But these are the mistakes that we make. Yeah. But I think I think that um uh, the world has the drastically the, the the world has drastically changed. I mean, um, when we shot this movie, we were just it, it was just about on the verge. Like you know, honestly, I think HDV was out for HDV the format. You know, where you can actually um, shoot. Um, um, kind of pseudo HD images. Um, it came out, but it was it wasn't like there yet, and the red camera wasn't there. Um, uh, HD was definitely not affordable at the time. Um, so for us to go out and shoot 16 millimeter was like shooting the old way. Like that's how people were shooting maybe 40 years ago. You know, um, if they already made independent films at the time. But um, today, I mean, everything has changed so much that people. I mean, you can go out there with a super small camera and you can have wireless monitors. You can probably stream an image to your cell phone that, that everybody can watch like while you're shooting. It's just a, a whole different game. So I think filmmakers should really take advantage of the new technology and but, go out there and, 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 and do it, you know. But on the other hand, by experiencing the, uh, those... Uh, Limit, limit, limitation of the technology uh, on shooting on film. You learn how important these things are. Some people who just start making film using the digital camera don't realize how important the uh, monitor is, has been. Well, yeah, you know? I mean, for us, I, I, for me as a producer, I mean, this is a, was a big question what we're going to do because in the end I'm responsible that we actually have something up there on the screen um, that uh, that looks good. But with the given time and, and, and uh, the resources we had available, for me, it was like, okay, I think the, actually the red camera was out, but there were, the, there were things going around that sometimes you were out there to shoot something and then you would suddenly lose files and you wouldn't, you know, there were stories going around. So, um, versus us going out there shooting with a 16 millimeter camera, let's say if there's a hair that gets into the gate or something doesn't work out, it was kind of a trade-off. And since we wanted a, um, Jeff was very uh, into this, you know, French New Wave look, like, you know, um, I, for me, it wasn't really a question in the end um, to, to budget for uh, shooting 16 millimeter because whatever would go wrong there, um, would add more to the movie than if we shot on the red camera and we lost like five takes and we didn't even have the footage, you know. So I think that that was kind of my my reasoning on, on what to choose because it was just, it would also add to the whole, you know, like if you're out there in the forest with a camera, a 16 millimeter camera and with four people in the crew, it's just, a, it's, it just is the whole experience that will already make your film you know it's like how they did it back in the days and we wanted to make a film that kind of has that look so um it just uh i hope i was hoping it adds to the package cool yeah cool. uh shigoni naka san what's the new next your new next new project i'll i'll i'll, I'll come back to the question <coughs> at the end uh thank you for your question but don't keep keep asking us a question um so oh so yeah you jacob mentioned about the uh, french new wave question so let me ask you jeff why did you choose this look i mean uh super 16 and like you kind of intentionally made the movie old look look old look like an old movie why is that jeff well what's really great about shooting super 16 mm -hmm. or shooting film in general uh and just coming out of film school is that you know when you make because uh, part part of this uh of etienne uh, a good portion I, I don't know the exact percentage but a good portion of it i i de um DP'd myself. I was a cinematographer, <laughs> so I was operating the camera, directing, and I was uh, uh, lighting it. <laughs> so uh, the the good thing about film, as opposed to digital, is that um, if you mess up on the exposure, or you mess up on the lighting, or if you do something that's really bad, um, film, for whatever reason, I don't know that terminology but film is so forgiving that it'll make it it'll like 
repair what what <laughs> the the damage that's been okay there great that's a picture of me um yeah i'm <laughs> <laughs> and and clint yeah so the film is is so forgiving for for a novice and a, a very inexperienced uh, cinematographer like myself that i could make it uh light however i wanted and it'll still be even if it looked like garbage it would still look better than if i lit the same way and shot digitally so uh, i think film shooting film uh on my level was the best thing i could have done uh and um ultimately when the film became kind of like this well i, I wanted an, a nostalgic look and a 70s feel so it, it just helped everything helped in all the mistakes uh what benefited the film i think um and uh I, a lot of it, a lot of the mistakes, I can just play off as, yeah, that was intentional, <laughs> because <laughs> it seems it, you, ha- you have to. <laughs> and, I, and I have to. I have no choice. Well, so uh, it all works out. So Jeff, so that scene, you did it on purpose? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. That 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 scratch, the the reason why that light was, all, and the reason why it's so grainy, that was all. In- <laughs> that wasn't because the lab messed up, right? Yeah, and and then that bad performance, it was intentional. I wanted it to be bad. <laughs> well, I mean, actually, when I when I first saw the rough cut, I mean, I saw it was all intentional. <laughs> so, I mean, I, well, I well the first uh, the first um, I mean, the first cut, Jeff actually added a whole bunch of filters and if oh. you um um if you go and uh, and actually purchase our DVD, um then uh, you will see in the deleted scenes um, we pulled footage from the very first uh, you know scenes that that Jeff edited and we we ourselves we were like oh my god how much freaking hairs on that uh, you know on those <laughs> scenes and then we realized like he put a bunch of filters <laughs> so but it 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 it, it was actually like, the when I saw the first cut I was totally amazed because I was like oh my god you know it looks it looks so old and then I, you know he told me he put a lot of filters on it so mm. well I think I think beyond beyond just the my personal uh, taste for for that look uh, I, I think the, the 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 style the the shooting on Super 16 w- would just fit the the story because the story wasn't really supposed to take place uh, it was supposed to take place in a time period that kind of undefined but um, there would be something where uh, you could watch this film 10 years from now or 15 years from now and it still look it won't be dated I didn't want anything that kind of dated the film so if you kind of made the look if you made the film look like it was shot 10 years ago and it won't it won't really age you know, and uh, since we're talking about the um, the look of the film, I mean, it's it's it goes back to you know like who you should make a movie with and and all like independent filmmakers' advice. Like you want to make sure that the people on your team they all see the same movie. Um, you know, like if we had somebody in there who was like a, you know a major sci-fi fan and and wanted to you know like I, I I bet you the guy would have come in and be like hey we should shoot this on like a different camera we may, hey, need to make it look all good and then you would add all the filters in the end and so on but I think that wasn't the vibe and and this speaks for your whole team um, like um, when you look at our uh, our poster like even down to the poster I can't show it right now but um. Uh, you know, we had to. We we were very lucky to find two designers from Germany, two girls, um, Karina and Stella, um, who did our entire design for the website, for you know the DVD, the poster, postcards, pins, everything, and just like having them on board. You know, it was such a perfect match because we didn't really have to like tell them every little thing like we wanted to do. They came up with the design and. Um, and it just it was very easy to work with because they got it they knew what the movie was they loved the film they they got jeff's style and um so yeah 
if you yeah this is the website that we're seeing right now so um, and and it's uh, it's hard work you know like the other thing is we didn't have any money for this so um, they um, they were just coming out of college and finishing their thesis and uh, it was a time where um, you know we we said okay um, would you want to do this for us and they they agreed and uh, they did the design for us and even up to today we're going to be releasing a Swiss DVD and uh, we're probably going to have to go back and ask to modify the DVD a little bit so um, but yeah so you want to have a creative uh, team that completely matches um, and because it's so much easier to work with um, than if you have people who all want to make a different movie yeah we're, we're, we're lucky in, in the design Cool, cool, cool. So, um, um, so now you, how, 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 how many days uh, of the production filming for this film total, Jeff? We, we started shooting in July of 2007, and I believe we wrapped principal photography in August of, of that year, and then we did a reshoot in December. So maybe six months uh, on and off around there, mm. and then and then I spent um, like ten years editing it, <laughs> <laughs> or not ten years, <laughs> uh, like two years. Uh, yeah. So um, so uh, cool. So how how was the uh, editing process? Who did the editing of the ATM? Uh, I I did as well. Uh, okay. I was the editor, uh, director, writer, um, caterer. No, no, I didn't. Cater. <laughs> I wanted to. Hey, I, I was the caterer. Come on. Oh yeah, you catered. <laughs> uh, but I, I edited the film. Um, I don't know if I should have edited the movie, uh, but at the time there was no real option. We couldn't afford to pay anybody. And uh, I used Final Cut Pro to edit on a G5. This was back in 2007, 2008. Uh, G5. Right before Apple went to Intel. So um, the, the post-production process uh, was on a, you know on, on any independent production. They'll say like, man, post-production really sucks, and it it, does, it did really suck. Um, it, it was awful. It, it was uh, we spent all the money on production, and we had no money for post production. And you know, if you shot digitally, if you shot a digital, uh, like the red, or, 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 or back then it would have been a DVX, uh, no, DVX 200, like a P2, uh, in 2007. If you would have shot digital, then um, you would have had an easier post production process. Uh, but because we shot film and we had no money for post-production, that means we couldn't afford to really uh, transfer the film to digital correctly. Uh, it was done very cheaply. We, we went to the cheapest uh, post-production house we could find. Um, <laughs> that is no longer? Yeah, when we got what we, what we paid for. But um, we, uh, we, we did everything the cheapest possible, and, um, and that would explain why the film looks the way it does now. But uh, you... so we, we um, the the film was transferred from 16 millimeter to a DV cam, and, and uh, in a one light transfer. So a one light means, uh, to, to to in layman's terms, they take the film and they just put it on, on a tape, and they don't even look at it. They just transfer it uh, as sloppy and as fast as they can onto a DV cam tape, standard definition. And then, um, supposedly, that was our um, offline master. So um, we hoped that, okay, I would take the DV cam tapes and edit them. And then when I'm ready, when the cut has been locked and ready and it's finished, then we would take the time code, uh, the key codes, from the DV cam tapes, and then we would up-convert it or uh, online them to uh, high definition and eventually to a 35 millimeter um, output. Uh, but that uh, costs, I think the minimum at the time was like $35,000. And um, <laughs> the, mo the movie didn't even, well, the movie cost a little more than that, but 
uh, that would have been like double the, the cost of the production. So we, we, we didn't do that, so we just used the deep cam. I don't know if I should be saying, should I be saying this, Jacoon? Because I, I want to tell. Dude, you, we, we tell people how much this movie cost and that they should be buying DVDs, uh, not only because it's the best DVD they'll ever buy, but also to help us out, like pay off our debt. <laughs> okay, so we're like homeless people, or like uh, we're the Katrina. The uh, Katrina. I don't know if, you, if we should go there, but we are oh, um, okay. definitely in debt. <laughs> well, okay. Anyways, uh, I, I uh, the film was edited in standard definition, and then we um, were able to. There's there's a, a bunch of post production houses in Los Angeles. It's the mecca of uh, post production houses, and we uh, we found one that gave us a good deal, uh, laser, uh, Jacoon, laser video, laser film and video. Uh, laser Pacific. Laser Pacific. I was way off. Okay, I knew there was a laser in there. So Laser Pacific, and they they, they gave us a, a decent deal uh, on up converting it for, to HD, uh, the poor man's process, and uh, that's yes. the version. Yes, and and don't for. Please also mention that Fuji Film actually sponsored the. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. This. We shot the film on Fuji, so. Yeah. Uh, yes. When you shoot film, you have a choice. You have Kodak, and uh, we went with Fuji on a on a brand new film stock that they invented uh, at the same time that we were about to shoot, and uh, I saw the film stock and it looked like a 70s. It was supposed to be a warmer vintage. Feeling, and I'm like, oh man, that's the film stock we need to get. And uh, of course, it's like, yeah, you have the film stock, and it'll, it'll look like that, but you got to shoot it like that. You know, it's not just the film stock that's going to do all the work. So um, I guess we could have shot it, in. but um, Fuji is amazing. They gave us a, an amazing deal, and I'm I'm really grateful. And um, well, they, uh, they we had a screening at the silent movie theater um, right after Cine Vegas, and uh, Fuji actually came out and um, they asked us if we uh, were projecting this off VHS, and then we uh, confessed to them what went wrong in the post production process. So uh, that's why they came on board and helped us out to uh, get the film um, to you know look what it looks uh, like you know now and uh, basically to upgrade it to HD in a process that was. Um, um, uh, the, the the best affordable in our situation because you know like technology has advanced so much that um, we we had bit, like offers in between as Jeff said thirty five thousand to one hundred and sixty thousand to get our film up to you know whatever. Uh, super HD, crisp and clear look. On the other hand, though, um, everybody agreed that the film had this special look, and so for us to go out and spend that much money, which, by the way, would have been more than our production budget, um, multiple more, <laughs> um, we, uh, we decided to... Uh, to test the film a little more also with audiences and film festivals and see well, how they uh, respond to it. And after, after the general consensus was that the film had a great look, we uh, went with a process that, um, um, that would do the, the job to get us an HD copy, but wouldn't require us to go back in and do a DI process or, you know, like, um, retransfer everything to HD. Um, so I, that I was kind of... It, when when people were telling us that, I couldn't I couldn't tell if that was a compliment. Where I knew it didn't look very good, but then people said it didn't really matter what it looked like. So I was like, "Well, Is that a compliment." I mean, well, I think that maybe some people you we we don't know, but I mean, if if major critics um, in their you know. Uh, reviews write that the film has a nice look, a special look. Um, I don't think that they are lying. So, um, <laughs> uh, I guess the uh, the so film low that I'm glad that we. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> anything above that, anything above the ground is is good. So uh, I'm happy. I, I, I guess um, you know what we could uh, at this point just like um, people buy our DVD. Check out the film and send us an email and tell us what you think about the look of the film. So, I, I would I'd, say most I'd people say, won't care. Well, let's see. Let's have people check it out on DVD. Etienne, DVD, now available. <laughs> it's available for Valentine's Day. If you don't have a good Valentine's Day present, um, you want to order it right now and send it to your loved one. 
Well, uh, Jakun, did you look at the questions that I sent you? Uh, no, actually, you... I, I was gonna do this, but then I got, um, I got, uh, I had to transfer to my office to do this because of the uh, connection. Okay. Well, that's what, why What's you the question? Not, no, you weren't following the uh, order. That was the last. You were. You wanted to. You wanted to say last. Okay, you that to word. Say last. Yeah. You should. You should oh, say I'm gonna, that last. I, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say it again. You don't want to tell people there's a DVD until the end, and yeah. then they'll be surprised. There's yeah. a DVD. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So you kind of screwed it's up. It's over now. Like, I don't know what we're gonna do now. <laughs> hey, cats, how can people ask questions? Um. If you go to, uh, there's a social timeline on the right side of the screen, right? On the page. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You log in and you leave the comment there. Are you going to ask yourself, are you going to ask me a question, Jagoon? Uh, no. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I, maybe some people want to ask a question, I don't know. Okay, well, anyway. So, so, uh, um, but, um, you... You know, since um, I don't want to ruin the movie, but uh, so I don't want to show too much of the clip. But seems like uh, you have a really great uh, soundtrack in the movie. So can you talk about the um, uh, music that you use in the movie, Jeff? Sure. Yeah. The the, the soundtrack is. Out of all the screenings we we, we did on, on the film festival tour and all the other little test screenings we've done, um, even if people didn't like the movie, they always told us we had a good soundtrack. So uh, I was glad at least, man, at least you like the soundtrack because <laughs> it's it's kind of uh, wall to wall music in in, in a good way. Uh, so Etienne. There's a lot of musical sequences. It's a road trip movie, so road trip movies kind of by definition have a lot of music montages. So uh, I, I, I packed the, uh, the film up. Um, I, I have kind of a music background, a garage band music background. So I, I thought music, to me, when I was writing the script and when we were shooting it and when I was editing it, music was so important in the tone and uh, the feeling of, of, of the movie so <coughs> put a lot of music in it and i'm very happy that people responded well to the music and the the soundtrack was comprised of uh we had a composer that uh that jacoon talk about because he's a friend of jacoon's and then we had the band great northern we are seeing right now uh they're a real band and they're in the movie they sing a, uh, two tr two songs, two of their own original songs in the movie, and we, re we recorded it live uh, while they were shooting, and it's going to be hopefully in a soundtrack coming up soon. And then uh, we had a lot of other... Uh, some of the actors are musicians themselves. The roommate character in the film, Matt Guerin, he he's a musician too, and he has electronic he has electronic piece in there. I composed something, uh, a couple things in, in the film myself, and then we had uh, a bunch of. When I when I first uh, wrote the script, I, I filled in the script. I wrote down a bunch, a bunch of French uh, uh, '60s, '70s pop songs, uh, female pop songs, and I, we tried to to uh, retain them. Uh, after you know to, to try to afford them after we uh, went to the festivals but we couldn't afford most of them or all of them so we had a composer recompose or not, not you know, compose brand new stuff and uh, his wife w was the vocalist and she, she uh, spoke French and it was, it's beautiful and Jakun you want to talk about our composer our amazing composer yeah, composer, that's uh, Mark Bachle. He's uh, New York-based, um, originally from Basel, Switzerland, and I was introduced to him through a mutual friend. Um, he's already composed music for my undergrad thesis, so when we did Etienne, I um, contacted him. I was like, hey, Mark, uh, are you uh, interested in doing music again uh, for no money? <laughs> and uh, so he was like, yeah, absolutely, uh, sent me the... Uh, you know the screener so we sent him the movie he loved the film and um i think um 
at the time, yeah, we were using, Jeff gave me, initially gave me, um, I sent that to Mark as well, like he sent me a, like a, a CD with all the tracks, like when I read the script, I already had the whole soundtrack on a, on a, a CD, uh, and he kind of marked the script, listened to track one, listened to track, you know, five, and so on, so I could go through the movie, and I knew exactly... Yeah, no, it, it's a good. It was a good way for me to get what Jeff was trying to do, and also understand that, um, you know, that I actually saw the same film. Like it helped me to understand that. Um, and uh, and then so we we gave this to Mark, and uh, I think that without us really. Um, giving him too much instructions or thoughts or whatever, like maybe a phone call or something. I, I mean, Jeff, you've never met Mark, like up to this day, you know, like you I, I don't know if he exists. Is he real? I, I don't know if he's real. I think you're Mark. Are you Mark? <laughs> um, yes, no. Um, yeah, like um, the, he, he basically got it um, and, and uh, he sent us a song. Uh, the the first song that he composed and it was dead on. It was a a great song. I don't know, cats, if you have the songs, but maybe you can play it. Um, so uh, he did that song and it was it was awesome. His uh, wife Charmaine she sang on it, which is hilarious because I didn't know that she was a singer. Um, and um, French no, then he, she sang it in French. Yeah, she's actually uh, Swiss Filipino, which is really funny, and then she's Swiss French, um, uh, so uh, that's that's where the French comes from. And um, then Mark did a bunch of other tracks for, uh, I guess, underscore for the film, and uh, he ended up later on composing... Uh, another full soundtrack song for the movie and then he did a, a third one so like he did a bunch of like original m tracks that hopefully will end up on our soundtrack one day I know on Wednesday he's actually gonna mix our theme song in New York uh, for the soundtrack so we're still having hopes that this one day will come out so yeah I was I was so very impressed by that first initial track that he made and, and it's a title track of, of the uh, of Etienne and it plays on all, um, I don't know if it plays on the trailer, but it plays yeah. on everything else that we promote for the film. And uh, it's, it's so catchy, and, and, and it, it hits the exact tone that I was going for for the film. And I didn't even tell him anything about what I wanted, and he just wrote it, and I, in, I knew instantly that was, he's the guy that needs to, to, to compose the rest of the uh, tracks, or as much as that we, we wanted to fill, because... Um, I would say the majority of the film is uh, filled with music from other artists that I, uh, a lot of indie artists uh, from around the world. Uh, I mean, when I say from around the world, I only mean uh, uh, the States and uh, the UK. <laughs> well, well, it's Japanese, almost around the world. But there's, 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 a, Japanese there's a Japanese artist, they would be in there. That there's a great story how we got that um, the guy from England to uh, uh, to got his music. It's um, a track called uh, uh, what's it? the band's called Water into Wine Band, and the track is called um, uh, what's the track called? I kind of forgot. Do you remember, Jeff? LED's photo. Waiting for another day, 1976. Um, so that that's a great story because 1976, Jeff told me that he's seen or he's heard that, that track on a compilation from at that time, a CD kind of a thing. So um, that's all I had to find out who composed this track because we needed to get permission. We needed to have this guy sign off for us to use it in the movie. So I went online and I, I, I went on Google and whatever. I, I looked for, you know, this thing and I found a blog where somebody replied to the track um, saying, hey, I love this music, you know, 1976, such a great time, we were out, blah, blah, blah. And then a guy replied, and he's like, oh, thanks so much. This was, uh, you know, when we composed this, we were out somewhere in Scotland in a lock, blah, blah, blah. And it, only, it said it was a Ray Wright from London W3 or something. And um, I ended up finding an online phone book for London, and uh, I found the guy, and I called him up. And it was really awkward because I was like, hey, uh, are you the composer of this song? And he's like, yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we ended up uh, talking. Um, what? What? 
What did you say? Sorry. <laughs> no, I didn't say anything. Continue. Continue with your story. Okay. I'm interested. So, so you don't know this, huh? Um, I, no, no. So, I'm hearing this for the first time right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't tell you everything. But um, <laughs> so yeah, I ended up actually flying to London um, after he uh, he gave us permission and everything, and I met him for dinner. And it's he's a great guy. He's uh, he lives out there, and he's still doing a little music. His uh, his son is doing music, and uh, uh, it was just great. It's great to meet a lot of people who were coming on board of this movie uh, because they like the film and because they they just uh you know they, they they wanted to contribute their their thing to it so that was one of the one of the stories um, cool so um um so how did you technic like jeff technically how did you find this music like uh did you well, I, already know I, this I have, music uh, like, like i said i'm kind of an amateur musician myself so and then I, I, I'm a big music fan I started with before I uh, I'm sorry movies. Jeff I my que I you already understood my question my question was you use some of the local indie independent music bands in the movie uh -huh. so how did you find it sorry how did I find the lo like Great Northern yeah oh okay uh, I mean how how what's the how, what's the um, what's the trick What's the no? I mean, it, you don't have to tell me specifically, but uh, how w how do you train yourself to find this music and put it place it onto the film? Oh, uh, I, I don't know how would um, I just have really great taste in music. That's all I. Have to say. <laughs> no, no, I. Uh, no, I. Uh, I uh, it, it's it's funny because when I'm writing the script, when I was writing the script, I I was just listening to a bunch of tracks, the random music sometimes, and whatever fit the mood that I was feeling when I was writing, uh, I'm like oh man that that's the song, and if that's not the song, it needs to be a song like that song, and then I would just look through my music collection and I'm like what what song sounds like this one because I know I'm not gonna get the Beatles, and um. I would find it and, and I would look for the indie stuff because I'm like, all right, well, at least the indie stuff I'll have a chance about getting. Uh, and then uh, it also helped that at the time I was uh, freelancing, uh, doing uh, videography and editing for a, rec a record label, a local record label in Los Angeles. And that record label happened to just have a lot of bands that I was into, and one of them was Great Northern. And then there's a, a few others that ended up in the um, in the movie that like their songs ended up in their movie, and um, I don't I don't I don't know how to explain it. Uh, I, I'm sure some people will say that's the worst song they could ever go with that part of the movie, but uh, it just felt right. The feeling. Is that well, I mean, Jeff has Jeff has great musical taste. Um, he's kidding about it, but he does, and um, I think that um, he chose um, great music for the film. And it was uh, for me, you know, if he had chosen some some tracks that that you know were because you can make a commercial decision or you can make an actual artistic decision that fits. And if he had like picked a bunch of commercial you know songs that um we wouldn't have even had had a chance to get um i mean he did choose a few which were french but he didn't know those were the best like the biggest french most famous french songs ever so you know it was it was impossible to get these songs versus the other songs it was really like um because he he chose them that they they fit so good to the movie like when we told the bands hey do you want your song on our film the bands were like, "Hey, that's great!" I, you know, because they they organically liked the movie. Like Jeff liked the music to the movie. They liked the movie to the to the music. So, um, I think that was really it. Made, it made it really easy for me to to get the uh, the the licenses li licenses uh, and have them sign off. I, it did take nine months, but um, other than that, it was really easy to do it. Cool. So, uh, uh, in in summary, that Jeff. Uh, so you kind of already imagine the music since you are writing the uh, movie, right? Yeah, it's, it's, I guess from how, how I work and how I do things uh, is it's very musically based. based. So uh, if, if a scene, 
if I can't picture the music to a scene, then I just can't picture the scene. Mm. So I'm kind of retarded that way. <laughs> no. Well, but I mean, I mean, Jeff comes from a music from a music background. I mean, I don't know. Um, it's a, it's an yeah. open secret that he has a band and uh, he's hilarious playing the bass. Um, so the Mulholland's go Is check it out. I said it's hilarious. I didn't say bad. Um, it's just <laughs> hilarious to see you. I actually, I, I've, I've, I didn't really know that Jeff had a band, so we made the movie, and then he told me, and I went to a concert. It was great. Uh, what are you talking about? I casted my lead singer in the movie. Well, yeah, but we didn't shoot that scene until we came back from, from up north, and I didn't really know about that. I never came to a well, concert for, for before the, record, the film. The singer in my band is in Etienne, and she plays the uh, desk clerk at, at the uh, animal hospital. And and from what I didn't know was that uh, her job before she came out, she she's from the East Coast in in the states. Before she came out here, she was actually a nur- like a nurse at at a, a vet. Club. So she already had the, the nurse scrubs from her old job so it was <laughs> it, it, it's like hey can, can you be a a vet clinic uh, like a clerk uh and, and then and she's like oh no i yeah i was just that was my last job like, oh <laughs> really oh i didn't know that <laughs> well how random <laughs> well i think you 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 were you meant to make this film film i guess jeff she had to be in it. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the point. Uh, yeah, and then you you happen to you happen to have a band, and then that's how you develop the uh, your writing style and how you form your um, style of choosing the music. Then, yeah, yeah, then, yeah. Then then after you chose the music, then what? That's when Jakun comes in to make it real, if it's possible <laughs> to uh, use it in the film. Or I'm the realist. Have, or I, that's a I, whole other. J- Jeff, Jeff has a hundred ideas, and I shoot them all down. <laughs> then, then you, cl- hey, we, you. We can get Rolling Stones and you too, right? We we can get them. They're good. <laughs> yeah, I and I tell him I, I I I take a week, and I tell Jeff I I contacted them, and they can't do it. Bono but I actually no, never. Sorry. Yeah, I I never contacted them. I just. You know, <laughs> then I go on my and then at the time, and this is pretty amazing because we're a couple of years later. At the time, we went on MySpace um, and my we looked space. for artists. Yeah, I know. <laughs> MySpace is the old Facebook. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, we went on MySpace and because there, there, it's the, the the place to be for bands. Maybe still, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's on, on MySpace yeah. Yeah. still, but um. Uh, uh, so so um, we looked for all like for a lot of music on there, and you know it was really it was good because we did find a bunch of um, a, b- a bunch of artists. Uh, I think we Gregory and the Hawk came f- through uh, MySpace research. Um, uh, didn't you find uh, uh, Sound of Bailey Etienne that song on MySpace? Yeah yeah, there was this one. Well, I, I knew uh, I was a big fan of this one artist. A, it, they're called he's called a sound of bailey and uh he he just i, I was always uh for like a year listening to him and then he he made a new song called again uh and i'm like oh that's that's that has to be in the movie it's just so perfect and it, it's uh comes out in the climax of, of the movie so uh, it was just too perfect and i'm so happy that he he uh, said yes him a lot of money oh and then just as an advice for filmmakers like if you um if you ever uh try and get a music track um that has your film title in the actual title uh don't tell your lawyer because yeah, don't, yeah, don't, they... yeah, don't, tell them. don't tell them that the movie's called that yeah, it's like hey it's uh, it's called the uh, richard hamster movie don't tell the hamster movie <laughs> yeah um <laughs> so anyways and then he signs and you, and you say ha it was called Etienne sorry <laughs> <laughs> you sign um <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, that's the music. The music is, uh, is is there. I mean, you can if you want to get the tracks from from the musicians, you can go on their websites and get them. Uh, you cannot get yet a compilation of all the the music. Um, no, don't, don't uh, support through our the artists. No, you should go and do that. But also, you should also do this. Um, if you're listening to this uh, com, uh, this uh, live broadcast, if you have any friends in the music industry um, uh, at a company that actually still makes some sort of money, tell them about our soundtrack and tell them to get in touch with us so that they can make our soundtrack. We got all the rights, so just have them contact us. <laughs> cool. Well, um, so uh, now you are done with the post-production film is in the can. Um, so uh, tell me about how have you been doing the uh, distribution? Uh, Tomer Shakori, you talk. Uh, uh, that I'm going to your question after, after uh, towards the end, but um, so. Tomer's uh, online. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. So, so tell tell me about the uh, premiere. How did you approach to the film festival, and tell me about the film festival journey, Jeff? Um, Jeff, uh, you want to so, take a stab? Yeah, I'll, I'll start it. Uh, so we, like I said earlier, uh, it premiered at Cine Vegas. Uh, that's a film festival in Las Vegas. And it no longer exists. Uh, there was some financial trouble uh, a few years ago, and it went under. But we were, uh, gratefully and luckily, the, the last film, uh, one of the last films uh, that played at the festival. And this was in 2009 of I, June, I think it was. And uh, it, I have to admit that it was my first experience uh, at, a, at any festival with my own film, with, with a feature film. And with a lot of uh, the, the cast and crew who came up, it was our, our first film. And it was the best time I've ever had in my entire life. With the exception of the time I'm having right now. This is the second best time I'm having in my life. And then the first best time I've had in my life was Cine Vegas. And... Um, <laughs> It, it it's basically a because uh, it's since it's in Las Vegas, uh, it's the city that never sleeps. It's a 24-hour party. So after your film plays or any film plays in the it's usually in the afternoon. So a film would play, and you'd watch the film. Then you go to another film, and then you'd go to the party for that film or for any part. They had they'd have a party every night. So you go to that party, and it lasts until about two. And then that party's over, and then there's another party that goes till four. And then you go to that party, and you're like, oh, well, the, the, the pool the pool in the hotel is, is open. So you go to the pool, and then you're there till sunrise. And then uh, there's a drug dealer, and you're like, oh, there's heroin. So heroin. <laughs> you're, you're, you're doing, you know, you stay up until about uh, 10, and then you sleep. And then you wake up at around five in the afternoon, and then you start over again. And this went on for six days. So, so uh, the the, the uh, Jacoon, do you want to go into uh, who runs, who, who who used to run Cine Vegas, and their connection to Sundance, and how cool they are? Uh, yeah. I mean, um, the uh, we we got um. Uh, Mike Plant was uh, the the guy who well, we sub I think we submitted to uh, Cine Vegas early on, even when the film wasn't done, um, oh, because yeah. we didn't really know. We, we, you know, there's something to learn about film festivals. Um, uh, in Europe, uh, there's, for example, a, they, they have a categories. There's A-list festivals. Um, so the A-lists are the ones where you would bring your movie and you would most likely sell your movie. Still now, you can probably get your movie sold. Um, 
And, you know, then there's B and C festivals, like smaller festivals where you might have, like in a B festival, you might have a great audience. Like, you know, it's all sold out. You might have a C festival where, you know, basically your entire audience consists of your family and your crew, you know, like you're responsible to bring the people in. So, um, you know, so we're talking A-list festivals are, you know, Sundance uh, in the U.S. And then we have Berlin, Cannes, Venice, and so on. Um so we didn't we didn't really know anything about film festivals except that um that you know you had to go to festivals so we sent like we finished the rough cut we're like okay we're sending this out and <laughs> and within a couple of weeks we got invitations from a bunch of film festivals and we're like oh my god um music wasn't cleared uh, the film wasn't really done and so on so many problems so we had to actually decline a bunch of invitations um including Cine Vegas in 2008 and um and that was kind of like embarrassing um because then also like you know we wanted to uh we wanted to get into maybe sundance because everybody wants to get into sundance and there's a premiere status that you you need to keep up and um so so with all that trouble we were looking for finishing funds and we we uh we finally got those in place and then was we had the finishing funds we could clear the music and so by the time sundance came around we were ready to submit to that and we did and we got rejected last minute um so right after sundance we uh called up in Vegas again um, and we're like hey can we come to you guys uh uh, in 2009 and they were like yes great and uh, the funny part about this was uh, in the spring um, a couple of months after we we did all that um, we realized that the director of the Cine Vegas Film Festival um, was like uh, I guess at the time uh, number like uh, the, the, the artistic director of Sundance so I'm sure they all had a blast of us like not knowing how to navigate the film festival world and trying to get into some festivals and then you know whatever so it was pretty funny um, so we ended up going to Cine Vegas and we ended up meeting everybody um, like uh, Cine Vegas was one of those festivals where um, you know you could actually sell your movie um, because there there's the entire critics everybody is there it's so close to Los Angeles that everybody flies out and has a good time but I guess they also go to party and not only to f buy films so we didn't sell our film there <laughs> um, and uh, and we uh, we had but we we had a great festival run after after that uh, including some really uh, Awesome festivals with great audiences, and uh, the film did win a, uh, a bunch of awards. It, uh, Jeff said earlier he did we didn't win anything in Vegas, but that's not true. He won the Director to Watch Award, um, and we won a, um, a kids uh, kids movie award uh, later on a kids first film festival, and uh, we won best narrative film in Oxford, Ohio, and so on. So it was a it was a really good uh, a really good time at festivals, and um, if anything, we got to travel a lot and meet a lot of people so it was a good good time yeah i think it was the best uh you know sundance or south by southwest or slam dance or but trebeca wh whatever the top tiers are those are nice but i am so happy that we were able to go to cine vegas cine vegas was man like yeah, i said I, the I, best I, time yeah yeah I well see the I thing mean, is the thing is with with festivals um you know, the, if you get rejected from a festival, you know, like uh, at first we're, we're like, oh my god, they don't take our movie, we're all like grumpy about it. But on the other hand, you know, film festivals know what movie will play well at their festival. And Cine Vegas was a perfect festival for Etienne because if you looked at the other movies that played there and the people that come out to Cine Vegas because it was all sold out you know like people people did go to Cine Vegas like the shows were sold out and those people know what Cine Vegas stands for and what kind of movies they screen and the same for Sundance people that go to Sundance they expect a certain kind of movies people that go to Cannes expect a certain type of movie so you uh, in your research as an independent filmmaker you you want to go and you want to make sure you're sending your film to a festival that actually shows your type of movie and you know don't 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 try and get into a festival that's completely out of your league I mean you might get in but it's a big gamble so I, and I was um, most surprised uh, aside from just everything being a party party atmosphere I was the 
my most uh, I was shocked at how amazing the other films were at that festival. Uh, usually, because I've been to a few other festivals before it's in Vegas, it's just a festival goer. And um, a lot of the times, you, you watch a lot of the festival, even the um, the, the centerpiece uh, film, and they're, they're pretty bad. And or, or they're not my taste; they're very bland. Uh, there's just parts about it that are just not very interesting. But for for some reason, Vegas that particular year, it might be because I was uh, drunk or on drugs the entire time. But the the films there were so good uh, that I enjoyed. Uh, when I went to see, see the other films, when I was uh, when I sobered up and I, I walked into a theater, um, I I really enjoyed the other films that I played, uh, and uh, I think that the um, the programmers did a very good job and had had, had very good taste uh, and very eclectic taste because it's a very there's a wide variety of films. So that that festival, you know, it's a once in a lifetime thing, and uh, glad glad it was there. I, I can. Uh, say that I had it. Honestly, say that my my premiere was perfect. Yeah. Except for, except for the film projection, but everything else was great. Yeah, I, I kind of start losing you again, Jeff. But uh, maybe you might want to. S- important. Uh, no, I, I could <laughs> I could I could hear you well. Uh, I mean, I could I could understand what you're saying. Maybe you want to stop uh, playing the the live stream right now. Um, so just speak of the um, um, just on the on the air, but yeah. So um, uh, yeah, it was. Did you uh, think about it, Cats? You were there. Yeah, I was there. I was. I I I I saw you drunk all the time. So. I sh- <laughs> but um, yeah, I liked the movie. I I watched the uh, I watched some of the film the uh, screen screen there at the same time, and then. Yeah, it was it was uh, yeah. All the movie that I've, I saw was was great actually. I yeah. So so um, yeah. Um, so uh, then let's talk about the uh, so Jacun. You are from Switzerland. So yes. Tell me about um, your journey to the film festival in uh, Europe. Did did Jeff go to Europe? Oh, well, Jeff was gonna go to Europe. Um, he had um, he was gonna come to the the festival in Poland, the Off Plus Camera uh, Film Festival. By the way, you, um, forget what I said before about submitting to festivals only that you think your movie will fit. You have to submit to the Off Plus Camera film festival and to heartland film festival because you can win um one hundred thousand dollars so you know that's like if you pay 35 dollars submission fee um if you really look at it it's worth spending the money for winning that money but anyways um Jeff was going to come out and pick up his $100,000 check. Um, uh, he, uh, I guess you made it to Chicago, as far as I remember. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Um, but it was at the time, um, uh, last year in April, I think, when uh, this volcano um, ended up erupting in I- Iceland or yeah. well, I don't know yeah. one of those countries yeah. um, and uh, so yeah the plane wouldn't fly and uh, so Jeff missed the screening and uh, a bunch of a whole bunch of other fun because we had a whole trip planned we were going to go to pa- uh, not to Paris but we were going to go to uh, Saint Etienne in in France um, and take a picture at the uh, the town sign um, for a little viral promotion um, so yeah, that. Him? Yeah, you didn't know that. I I, personal, I planned man. that. The first one. You're talking. Well, why don't you talk about the Swiss version of Etienne? Yeah, you you well, made that. Yeah. Well. I mean, this is kind of a, um, a fortunate thing that we, we were able to do. Um, so far, the movie will be, you know, released mainly in the U.S. Um, on DVD, uh, but we're also doing a Swiss release in, in the spring. Uh, so we've had a, we've actually had a theatrical uh, run here. After, after we played New York, um, the film was also picked up in Switzerland for a screening here, um, a one-week plus uh, at, uh, at 
the Zurich Theater. And um, so what we ended up doing for the Swiss DVD is a special bonus track. Um, we we uh, got in touch with. Um, um, actually, I gotta say, we uh, after we won a prize in the U.S. Uh, that certified the movie as a kids movie, which was pretty hilarious because the movie um, uh, doesn't have any you know uh, bad language or violence or whatever that stuff that kids are not supposed to see. Um, so it got certified from five to twelve age uh, years of age for kids to watch, and um, in order to um, uh, you know, kind of use that internationally. I uh, try to uh, establish a contact with uh, a, a very famous Swiss lady. Her name's Trudy Gerstel, and uh, she, all her life, she basically uh, told uh, fairy tales. Um, and I know this feels very retro, um, but this is what she did. She would record tapes, and she would go on TV, and she would. I mean, there's there's a bunch of. Uh, of, of things that she's done. She's now 90 years old, actually 91 years, I think. Um, and uh, I, I asked her uh, grandkid that I met at a party um, if uh, she would be interested um, in... Um, in, in doing a commentary, much like um, a director's commentary where, you know, the movie would play exactly the same and in the background you would hear the original sound, but um, over that she would speak uh, the story tell the story in Swiss German for kids and to my surprise this was uh, very well received and uh, within a couple of months we've put together this production um, and uh, and recorded this commentary which now will be featured on the Swiss DVD uh, when it comes out on April uh, 20th mm. so yeah it's a it's a it's a nice uh, it was a I think it fits the movie uh, really well um, because uh, it's also kind of a retro feeling. Um, people who grew up with uh, this uh, lady telling fairy tales, they have kids now, and hopefully they'll enjoy the commentary, and the kids that way can, you know, grow up seeing something from back in the days that might not be, you know, the most uh, flashy thing. Uh, like, you know, you can't compare it to a Disney movie or whatever the kids Make. really go and watch these days in the in the theater. Sorry, it's just, uh, it, it just goes with the movie well, I think, because it's so See, retro. I, there, there she is now, talking. So That's her. She's, she got really old, but she's awesome. We had a great time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, when I saw it, how... Yeah, you, you, you had a nice setup. Did you film that set, Jeff, or Jack, not Jacqueline? Um, uh, no. Yeah. Oh. I mean, we we uh we tried to we tried to time the whole thing so that when Jeff was coming to Europe that we could actually do it at the time. But after he wasn't able to, you know, fly out of Chicago, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, we had to just shoot it. So we had a company in Basel um, that oh, okay. uh, that uh, they they were. Um, Basically sponsoring the project, uh, it's okay. it's a it's a, a nice. Uh, they're actually doing a lot of like commercials and uh, productions, and for them it was interesting to um, you know like shoot uh, some narrative stuff, um, and we were really happy. Even uh, same thing happened with the studio, like uh, the studio that did the sound recording. They also helped us out like with a lot of goodwill um, to get this uh, production but going. So. You're not really explaining the, the, the funny part of, of everything. What is the funny part? The, the funny part is, um, so you, you did all this in Switzerland, uh, kind of not really telling me yet the full thing. <laughs> so um, what, what this is, what the Swiss version of Etienne is, there's this, old, there's this woman, uh, the, the storyteller, who is narrating throughout the entire film a different story than what I wrote, <laughs> uh, written by somebody else, uh, not associated with the movie at all, has no real, I don't even know if they saw the, the, the original movie, they're just looking at the movie without the sound, and they're putting narration over what, what I made. <laughs> And um, that's what it is. <laughs> so <laughs> when Jakun told me that, I, I was I was kind of uh, like, okay, all right. So uh, basically, it's my the movie I made. Um, 
it's still the same editing for the most part. There's some some things maybe taken out, but whatever. It's for the most part my movie. But all the sound is gone. And over that is this uh, Swiss woman narrating her own story about what she thinks what the movie is like what what's happening in the movie and jacoon says yeah yeah it's like that and then jacoon was telling me the differences in what um what what the swiss version is versus the english for i mean like the, my version like what we, what we did and she's like yeah so uh, in, in in the swiss version um it, it's about uh, uh, uh the hamster the hamster talks in, in the swiss version and i'm like okay the hamster talks like, yeah, yeah, the hamster talks. And he's communicating with Richard. Like, okay, all right, that's fine, whatever. <laughs> and and then uh, he starts explaining about the, the the other differences in the film. And then uh, at the end, uh, after he explains all this, I'm like, okay, so basically, it's a completely different movie. And Jacoon says, yeah. And I'm like, okay, all right, that's whatever. <laughs> that's the story. Well, that, was that is that is kind of the story. Um, I wish that um, one day when I'm Jeff not bitter, I'm was... happy about it. No, I, I'm, I can't wait. I have not seen it. I have. I don't even no, know I don't what it's about. I'm, I'm bored to it. But I, I, when you learn Swiss German, finally, um, you'll watch it and you'll discover that the heart of the movie is is exactly the same. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, the, we did some changes. Uh, like when you see. Um, like, uh, is there a magician well, like, in the movie now? There's, there's a magician. Like we added some fairy tale elements to it, um, which is actually really hilarious. Like if you w watch the original. Well, you movie don't want to, you don't want to reveal it too much. The story. Uh, you, you, I know. I'm yeah. not going to reveal it, but yeah, like uh, uh, we, we, um, you know, there's, there's like wishes. Is there time uh, travel? There's wit. There is wishes. There, there's wishes. There's there's time travel. Um, there is uh, there's uh, 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 unicorns Are there and uh, we were gonna do that, but it was it was uh, the, the movie Avatar came out at the time, so right. we didn't want to be like too you know like stealing stuff. So, anyways, it's a it's a good production, and I think that um. Uh, I was very happy that Jeff went along with it initially, and I was very happy that he was. Well, I haven't all... seen it yet. I have no idea what the movie <laughs> looks like. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't really so, know so, what, what it is. So far, so good. So far, so good. So it's it's a really um, it's it's funny. So and I think it's great. Okay. Um, so that's what's happening in Switzerland, and as I said, um, we're gonna try and uh, you know see if we can do a Japanese release, and also the UK I think would be pretty interesting to do, um, and Germany uh, with Turkey. So that's kind of the plan at this point um, for the film cool. to come out. Cool. So um, you decided to uh, for the US. Uh, what's what's the deal of um, uh, DV you you finished the theatrical, right? Yeah, we um we had a theatrical release in New York, and um we had tons of festival screenings uh, um, that went on. So we're kind of wrapped with that now. So the next step was uh, there's a digital. The movie is available digitally. You can see it on Amazon. And you can also see it on the Xbox 360 and on PlayStation, and I guess will be released on um, Netflix, like Netflix at one point. And uh, and but what we did, uh, we're doing a self distribution on this film, so um, the physical. We Exactly. Um, we uh, spent the last uh, one and a half years making a DVD with a bunch of great uh, extra features. Uh, so the DVD is now available for, I mean, you can buy it kind of from every country. Um, I would say, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, it, it, it has like a, a whole bunch of stuff on it. Um, let's say uh, I can read it here. Um, no more pictures, so I'll just read it. There's deleted scenes on it, which are great um, featurettes. Um, Jeff's short film, maybe you can talk about this later, Jeff. Um, uh, he made a short film uh, that kind of like started Etienne, so that one's on there. And we have uncut performance from Great Northern and trailers, and of course the movie is on there, and a bunch of stuff. So um, it's definitely a cool 
a cool uh, DVD to own. If people still buy DVDs, um, you should definitely get that well, one. You won't get you won't get any of these special features any place else uh, that 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 the movie is sold. So the only place to see this stuff is to buy the DVD, or uh, if you want to search online for the uh, torrent that's uh, been ripped from the film. I'm sure you can find that. But don't do that. Uh, buy the movie and. Um, See all these special features that, that we made. Uh, one of the deleted scenes uh, is the alternate ending of the film. We shot two endings for, for Etienne, and um, the original ending is in the deleted scenes. So if you've seen Etienne before and you, you, you're thinking, man, that ending sucked, well, there's another ending, and uh, you might like that better, and it's in the del deleted scenes. Okay, okay. Sound, sounds good. So, uh, finally, I'm answering the question of uh, Shigoni Naka san and then. What about, uh, what about Tomer's question? Yeah, Tomer's question. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, the final question. So, uh, what, what are you going to do next? What are you working on right now? Jacoon? Uh, well, I was getting ready for this uh, this live stream for the last two weeks, so that's really what I was doing. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> um, I know. I mean, my um, my job right now is to finish the uh, Etienne DVD for Switzerland, which is pretty much done, and. Um, uh, there's a bunch of other projects uh, that I'm like besides besides uh, some films like Jeff's Jeff's uh, writing a treatment for me. Um, I'm uh, writing an own little uh, film here for Switzerland, and uh, there's a uh, script for the U.S. that I uh, have been lobbying around. Um, and you know, there's some festivals I organize and good stuff, and just keeping busy, good doing interesting things. So. I uh, won't be bored in the next few years. What about you, Jeff? Uh, I have another feature film that I co-directed that uh, is is gonna hopefully make its festival run later this year. And uh, I'm also just trying to develop uh, or finish finish writing uh, these other um, feature projects that uh, I've been writing for the past two and a half years. <laughs> It takes a long time to write a script. It turns out I didn't. I didn't realize that. I thought you just write it in film school, and then when you graduate, you make the film. But uh, you, you kind of need a lot more development for for uh, scripts. So maybe you have to go back to film school. Yeah, maybe I should go back to film school, and then maybe I'll write faster. And then when I when I graduate, I'll, I'll make another movie. But uh, no, no, no. I, I'm I'm doing. Uh, there's like <laughs> three scripts that I'm. I've been I've been writing for. Uh, or developing uh, for the past couple years and trying to get that finished. It's well, development is uh, is is definitely something we've learned. You know, to for certain films, you you do want it. Like if you have a story that's a. Uh, that is, uh, you know, basically you can package it. Like you, you might get interest from different actors. Um, you want to do development on your movie, and you want to try and attach, you know, certain uh, people to it. Um, some movies, you, you, you know, you just have to go and shoot. Um, so, you know, but yeah. uh, this happened. But yeah, it just so happened that it, we're at TN. It, 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 it was all okay. everything was there. So. Oh, I'm getting a phone call. I'm gonna mute myself. Okay, go ahead. Jeff, talk. I'm calling you. I'm calling you right now. That's why. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. So uh, I think with Etienne, um, it just everything was was there. Uh, all the pieces were there. So uh, we took advantage of it and, and made it. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm finding personally that uh, these the other projects I'm experiencing uh, how how the industry really works is you take to develop it, develop it. <laughs> no. Or is yeah. that is that is that yeah. what the second like what do you, second jinx like jinx of a uh, second film? Uh, well, the second film I've already uh, it's already in the can. It, it's oh, okay. done. It's like the third film that I'm really trying to. I think well, the, it's the first legitimate one that I'm I'm trying to raise money for and and do properly and and not have to spend my own money and. and um, Finding investors and 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 bigger name like re, uh, not real actors but 
uh, a name actor, an yeah, actor who yeah. you would recognize if you yeah. saw their face on on the cover of the DVD. Yeah. So uh, doing it that way, the traditional way, it, it's much harder and takes uh, a lot longer. Of course, of course. And I'm realizing that. So, so uh, um, this is the uh, like a million dollar question. How do you keep up yourself while um, you you keep talking about you have no money? But what's the motivation to keep up yourself, and what actually uh, drives you? And how do you find your time? I guess you have to do other job to pay your oh, bill. Oh yeah, yeah. So how how do <laughs> it's you not how filmmaking? Yeah, That's but how, sure. how how do you how do you keep up and then how you how do you find your time to do all all that in uh, in addition to a full time job? Well, I, I'm a little fortunate in my situation since uh, my other job or, or jobs is uh, freelance editing and videography work and um, like I'm editing music videos and short films and. Um, corporate like a lot of creative like documentary so I'm, I'm still I'm not too far removed from industry I would say I'm still doing creative things so uh, that's good uh, uh, be different I'm, I'm back okay. okay he's back okay great so <laughs> yeah so, so you want to know the same thing from from my side sure well I I, I love film school and um, uh, and and there's really one thing that film school, uh, one class that that you know they they teach you a lot of things, but one thing they don't teach you, I think, um, it's that one class that I would teach if uh, I ever be have to become a teacher, um, and it's uh, how to survive when you're not making a movie, um, because they they teach you like all these great things on how you can make movies and you know you shoot all the time, but really. Um, you want to know how you bridge those years that you are doing development and, and things. So uh, personally, I pick up phones for a living, which is really exciting. Um, but um, other than that, uh, it, it, I buy myself time to really do development, to communicate and, and, and try and, and meet people. You know, you got to have to attend. Uh, you know, it's another thing. Like, you know, you got to have to go to film festivals, maybe even if you don't have a movie in, your, in a film festival. Um, because, I mean, you need to know how film festivals work, who goes around film festivals, and you have to, you know, network, and, and because there's just too many people out there trying to make movies. Um, so if you're not in the mix, then who would want to make a movie with you, you know, unless you have the best script ever. If you find Truman Show, uh, you know, the new Truman Show, then obviously everybody wants to make your movie, but... Um, other than well, that, you know, you just have to be out there in the mix and do stuff, so. But I, I don't think it's it's all about the feature films, too. Like, uh, now that technology has advanced so far and now that uh, the uh, media, web media is so in demand that uh, it's not out of the question to work on a bunch of smaller projects. I think the smaller projects that would show up on, U like, a YouTube web series or... Uh, just commercials like spec commercials and since it's so easy to to have a quality video um, as long as you have some time uh, you can work on a bunch of little things like I, like I've been doing um, and and kind of build your experience and build uh, your resume and stuff like that so by the time instead of waiting for that big feature to, to happen you would have done so much um, smaller stuff that you know you can. I don't know. That could probably just add up. It's, I yeah, think it's just right. Yeah, you you were actually able to tackle it. You know. Yeah, but so. but question yeah. is, back in the film school, you had a deadline. You 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 had it as an assignment. So uh, you kind of had a pressure. Then you can you had the goal. Well, I mean, if you're if you're if you need the film school pressure to actually make stuff happen, I think there you might not be made for this business. Um, yeah. So you need how, to be able to you, set your own deadlines yeah. and make your own stuff. Like you know, there's no like you have to be able to get up every morning and just be uh, you know coming up with a thousand ideas and the thousand new ideas because there's too many people out there that that get up in the morning and have a thousand ideas and 
and they're they're probably even like the son of a big producer and so on. Like you're competing, you know, what's that movie called? Swimming with Sharks. I mean, um, that's how it is, you know. Like if you don't have the inner drive to uh, to do this, I mean, then you can go back to film school and you can get yourself like get yourself in a situation, you know, where you actually have to make it, you know. Or you go on YouTube and you make the big announcement that you're gonna make a movie, and now you have all that pressure because you're gonna lose your face, you know, in front of your friends. You have to somehow make the situation that that you that you're gonna do it if you don't have the inner drive that you're gonna do it anyhow. Like, um, but yeah, Jeff's right. Like, you know, as a direct, especially as a director, you need to write and write and write, and you need to shoot and shoot and shoot because when you get to make a, a bigger film, you know. Um, people are gonna be worried about like uh, you actually being able to pull through, and you know, like if you have nothing to show, they're not gonna they're not gonna be like, oh hey, uh, yeah, let's have this guy, you know, whatever, you know. Um, like Jeff gave when when Jeff uh, showed me the script of Etienne, he also I also was aware of his short films, you know, I knew exactly what kind of style of shooting he does, and. Um, and uh, I mean, I knew from there that he will be able to pull off the look because that's all he did. He did these Super 8 movies that looked all visually very interesting, you know. So um, I think that, uh, you know, uh, as a director, you just need to be out there shooting, writing. And as a producer, you need to be out there and network, you know. Okay. You just got to do it, man. You just got to do it. <laughs> but Jeff... Uh, There's no recipe. If there was a recipe, everybody would be doing it. Yeah, yeah. Dude, but Nike what, what do you out. do? What, Jeff, what do you do when you, like, uh, when you, like, uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, like, uh, dead zone? Or, like, you, 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 you... Jeff's never in a dead zone. Okay. Dead zone? Uh, you mean, like, writer's block? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Well, uh, I... I yeah, writer's block does suck. Uh, sometimes you're you're working on a project. Um, not gonna, I'm gonna be very figurative, but you might be working on a project and you're very uninspired by it. Uh, but um, what what Jacoon said, you just gotta do it. <laughs> Cause I, I well, think, yeah, but I think if you don't have that that push of, of just doing it, then you'll never you'll never do it. Yeah, you have but to but my, right. and, yeah. but it's also I think I have it, doesn't it also help to work like in a does it trigger what <laughs> doesn't it also help to work like in a team where um you know you kind of you have people that you're working with like if you're a writer have writer's block then you you talk about the the project and maybe that'll that'll get you back on track you know. Yeah, no, that 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 all helps. But I think uh, uh, when you break everything down, if you yourself aren't willing to do what needs to be done when you don't want to do it, then uh, if you don't have that, then we'll, you'll never you'll never make anything. It's just I think uh, our, our self distribution of Etienne is the perfect example of like no one is going to distribute this DVD except us, and if we don't do it, right. we don't do it. And I can tell you, like I'm honest, and uh, Jacoon, I'm pretty sure you don't want to do all this work because it's not what you were, uh, what you went to school for. It's not what I went to school for, but we're gonna do it because yeah. no one else is, and uh, this is the only way we're gonna, you know, see see success. Well, yeah, that's the only way how people can get the DVD. I mean, truth is that you know there are people who were going to distribute it distribute our movie but in the current marketplace um the um, uh the deal you will get how how you distribute how they distribute your movie it's really not that that great i i like to compare it to the sale of a house where they come out the house is the movie just as a <laughs> so they come out and they're like hey we really want to buy your house um but we're not going to pay any money um, for your house, we're just gonna get it, and we're gonna maybe share rent after we deduct all our expenses. And the worst part that we we uh, we we've seen in these kind of deals uh, is they go as far as then 
asking you to come back and clean the house every week. So those kind of distribution deals are just, I feel like, very disrespectful to anybody who makes a, a movie uh, because people are building libraries and they're, you know, hoping, you know, let's say if Jeff gets really famous and uh, and then, you know, they own the, his first movie, they're going to sell that movie off just like a property. And um, I just don't think that uh, this is something that independent filmmakers should be engaging in because in the end, if you sell, sell your movie for no money and you have somebody distribute it who won't, won't really put any effort in it, um, then you might as well do it yourself and sell the 20 DVDs that you're going to sell with that other guy yourself and make 100% uh, on it and maybe get some money back that you spent or that people gave you, like your family, your friends or investors, um, because uh, this is, it's, it's, just, it's just not worth it to let a movie go like that that you've worked on for such a long time. Just got to do it, man. Just got to do it. <laughs> All right. Got to do it. And you know what? In the end, it's pretty much fun. It's fun. Yep. Because, you know, like us making the DVD, it was it was cool. Like Jeff, you editing for two months, uh, making off video. Wasn't that I mean, great? I'm having fun now talking about it, but I'm not. Ha I didn't have fun when I was making it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's all about the good stories. You know what? If you don't have a good story to tell, then you definitely didn't have a good time. But, you know, we have so many good stories, it's crazy. Yep, 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 yep. Sounds good. And we have Sounds some bad good. stories. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Without, without Those the are going to be the rated, R, the rated R promos on YouTube that are, will surface very soon. So watch <laughs> out for that. All right. Anyway, so uh, so tell me more about the... Uh, tell me once more about the uh, uh, release and DVD and everything right now that you... Uh, as much as you can talk to me. Hey, can we show people the DVD? Can, can we be on video to show the, them the actual DVD itself? Or do you, can you go on the website to show them? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm already, I'm already on, the on the website. website. I'm already on the website. Only 19.99 special only, right now. Only 19.99. And Jakun, do you want to tell them this other special uh, uh, edition that they can get? Yeah, the DVD that most people are getting, actually, we 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 uh we thought we'll put up a um, uh, um uh, cats. You can uh, scroll over real quick to the to the uh, options with the DVD. So you know you can get just the DVD for 19.99, but when you actually click on that little drop down menu um, yeah. uh, above uh, add to cart, you can get. A signed DVD by Jeff Mizushima. It's a little more Damn. expensive. Damn. But Damn. Look at that. I guarantee you, you <laughs> will not regret having not this regret. guy's signature. <laughs> I had him sign a script. I had him sign a script. I had him sign everything. Everything, a can of film. I had him sign my butt. No, uh, not that yet. $29.99. Um, <laughs> deal right there for my signature. It's the exact same DVD you will get for $19.99. The exact same. Nothing's changed except for the fact that I have opened it and signed it. $29.99. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Good times. Um, yeah. So, um, so this is this is what we what we're com what's available now. And again, you know, you should uh, you should. Uh, I know you can't get it, it for Monday because it's already Sunday. But it <laughs> that, that's what it was. So I think this is a deal now. It might go up to forty nine ninety nine if you don't get it right now. Yeah, yeah, we were, we're we might increase the price. Um, but yeah, like uh, you know, if if you if you still want to get it for Valentine's Day on Monday, then um, you might want to give your girlfriend or even or boyfriend, I don't know, like a you know kind of a voucher thing uh, on Monday, and then order it today, and it'll be there on Tuesday. So um, it's gonna be great. It makes it's a great date movie, um, and it uh, and it's also it it, it's also great for. Um, yeah, I won't say it, but um. Well, if, I think if you're you're if you're a guy and then you want you to to satisfy your girlfriend, get the signed DVD from me, because that would make your girlfriend uh, completely satisfied. Because not only does she not only does she film, she gets a signature from the director that will that will uh, hopefully help your sex life. 
And then, uh, I mean, for guys, single guys, um, you know, if you want to get laid, I mean, this is uh, this is a 100% tune in right there. So with my signature, um, I still get laid. Okay. okay. <laughs> Well, this is like supposed to be uh, okay. five to so twelve. So I think we, we need to end this uh, this this chat now. It's yeah. getting out of hand. But yeah. um, I mean, everything Jeff says is so true. I mean, I've, yeah. I've, I I can tell from personal the last experience. Thing I said, everything else is true. <laughs> Dude, I can tell you from personal experience. You're not that far off. Right. So, anyways, Thank you, um, this was really yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, it was a uh, it was a uh, great pleasure to uh, be on the show. Hey, you never answered Tomer's question. What was his question? No, Tomer's question: What are you guys up to these days? And uh, what are oh. your next project? What are we're gonna make a movie with cats and maybe Tomer? Tomer's an actor. Oh, okay. uh, we we met. Okay. He's a cool guy. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, well, so how, how can I get the, uh, do you guys, uh, how, how do you guys uh, provide the updates? Do you have a Facebook, Twitter? Uh, yeah, we have a Facebook page. So Facebook, Twitter, we don't do Twitter. Twitter's too new. It wouldn't go with the, with the movie, you know, the retro kind of thing. Okay. So, but we might, we, we were on, we're on, on MySpace, um, well, you, uh, the YouTube but we videos don't. are going to be, co be coming soon. Oh, okay. that's good, yeah. Yeah, like we okay. have a, we, we're we going to have a, like a series of YouTube videos uh, to kind of like give some more behind the scenes look. Because we discovered about two terabytes of uh, behind the scene footage. Now, it's just a matter of going through all that and finding time to do that, which uh, <laughs> Jeff is going to do. He told me he's going to do it, so. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> No, I'll, I'll, we'll do it together. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. So yeah, no, there's a there's a bunch of ways. I mean, you know what? Like, if you want to find the movie, you know, just go on Google and punch in hamster movie, and it's the first thing that comes up. Yeah. Um, nope. And uh, uh, yeah, if you go on BitTorrent Kino .to, you probably find it there. But don't, don't watch it. No, don't, 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 no. don't do it. Or or go on our website, and make a donation. Yeah, yes. because we track yeah. that stuff, like, you know, people, you, we, we got our eye on you. Like, every torrent that gets downloaded, you're in trouble. So, anyways, <laughs> um, that's that's what's going on. So, follow us on, on Facebook and uh, and even our mailing list or, you know, cats, email cats. Cats knows always what's going on. He's uh, yeah. almighty. Yeah. Cats the almighty. Yeah. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much, guys. And Arigato, yokoso. <laughs> well, thank I you very much. I didn't say anything in Japanese. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Thank, thank you, guys. All right, Thanks, cool. Jeff. Okay. So it has we'll, been we'll the uh, number twelve of Yokoso News Weekly. Uh, next Yokoso News Weekly will be. February 20th, 2011 uh, at 4 p.m. in Japan time or 11 p.m. in uh, Pacific uh, Standard Time so whatever but thank you very much for watching and see you guys next week thank you guys <laughs>